Welcome to Treasure Talks. Today, I've got Tom Davis, also known as Geo Wizard on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been excited for this one, mate, because I watched all the series that you did. I binge watched them. Um, <laughs> obviously, you had Wales in a Straight Line, and that's got like close to 10 million views on YouTube. Um, how does that yeah. feel for, for one? It's surreal. I don't think it's really... Um sunk in really that that that's got that many views i mean when i stop and think about it it is just you know it's an insane amount of views and people that have seen it uh, and i never i never could have um even the most optimistic side of me um never could have predicted that it, it far surpassed what i could have hoped for really and it, it, it is surreal so that was the attempt one that I'm talking about of Wales in a straight line. Mm. I remember someone telling me about it. Um, I think it was my girlfriend's brother mentioned that, you know, this had uh, caught some momentum. That's right. And, and I thought, okay, that, that's interesting. But that, that was it. And it popped up on my algorithm. I was like, I've got to, I just got to have a look at that, see what it's, <laughs> what it's all about. And when, as soon as I clicked it, I was just captivated. Like how really? much yeah, definitely. It was the, the narration. The, it was very unique to um to a lot of other things on there. Did it take a lot of planning? I'm guessing that must have taken a hell of a lot of planning. Yeah, um, the line itself did take a lot of tweaking, but actually, it was just a case of it is what it is, and I've got to just go. And um, there wasn't that much I could plan. Well, I say that it was bad planning that ultimately probably was my downfall but it was just a case of I had to go for it and it was all pretty unexpected I didn't know what to expect I didn't know whether it would be possible I thought I might be booted off by farmers within the first mile you know for all I knew so there was only so much I could plan really um, in terms of the actual trip itself where did you get the idea from because when I watch it back I think it, one, it's it's a catchy sort of title and whatnot, but it be, it's an adventure. And I, like when I look mm. at it, it, it reminds me of just growing up. Obviously, I, I grew up around the city, but we'd be off on little yeah. adventures as kids and yeah. and causing mischief and um, you know, like just getting in people's way or tr yeah. trespassing without meaning to. I don't know if that, this is what you meant to do, but for me, it's like a sort of nostalgic <laughs> feel. Like because when we were when we were growing up, it was a bit different to nowadays with people. Yeah. Up. Yeah, we 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 the, obviously we had video games. I mean, I don't know if you're my age, roughly. Uh, I'm uh, 31. Yeah, yeah. I've just turned 30, so yeah, okay. basically the same age. And uh, yeah, like we had video games, obviously, but it, they weren't as addictive as you know the the smartphones that exist now. And um, so we still, I still took great pleasure in, as you say, just like doing naughty little missions and. Yeah, exploring abandoned things and going off into the countryside. And, oh, yeah, we used, to, we used to get a real thrill out of that when we were sort of 12, 13, 14, and even a bit older. Um, and there's definitely a big part of that uh, that still exists in me today. And kind of that's why I enjoy these missions. It's, I didn't do it just because it hadn't been done. And I knew that it was a, a, a grabbing title. Um, that just kind of was the case anyway. But I did it because I knew I'd thoroughly relish this, uh, you know, as an adventure. Like, the, as you say, the mischief of it, the, the constant threat of being caught and, um, you know, having farmers around and having to go over rivers and over mountains. And, yeah, it thoroughly excites me, all of that stuff. So. Yeah, that, that definitely reminds me of being sort of probably younger than a teenager as well. And like you say, <laughs> just carried on all the way of finding those abandoned places and just being like on your own. Or obviously you did a second attempt, which we'll talk about shortly with, with a friend. But yeah, that, that took me back with that. And, I, and I'm still the same now. I'm still doing, trying to do things like that, going on walks yeah. and, and finding new places as well. But yeah. um, before oh, I've got so many questions on that uh, Wales <laughs> in a straight line because I felt like I experienced it myself. Like, I think oh, that's really? what, what did so well with that is I don't know if that's what you tried as well, but do like seeing it from the GoPro and hearing you talk to yourself on the way around, you yeah. felt like he was doing it with you. That's yeah, I guess that is what I wanted to 
achieve. I wanted to make people see it from my point of view and why I love that sort of thing. And uh, it did take me, I have to say, it took me months and months to edit that because I was quite new to editing and it's such a, such a bore like, <laughs> yeah. um, and I had to, I was, I, I knew in my mind that I wanted to paint it in a certain way so that people could see it from my perspective and hopefully fall in love with that sort of adventure as well, you know? Yeah. Like I say, I've got so many questions on the, the series itself, but you're not completely new to YouTube, are you? Like how, how did you start on YouTube and then um, before this series and what kind of led you to, to go with that of all things? Cause it's a little bit different from the rest <laughs> of your YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it is very different. Um, yeah. The, the first thing I did on YouTube and it's something that I, st I still do to this day uh, is play GeoGuessr, which is an online geography game, basically. Um, and I, the reason I got into that was, you know, I kind of had too much time on my hands and I was just kind of, I think I was working at a pub on the nights, but in the day, I, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to make um, something of my, I was trying to make it, make a success of my music at the time. Uh, so I was writing and recording songs, but you know how it is, you, proca you procrastinate. And um, so I played GeoGuessr, someone sent me a link to it and I was like, oh God, yeah, this is right up my street because I've always been a maps, atlases kind of guy. And um, so I just got really nerdy with that and I was trying to get perfect scores. And then, then I realized, hang on, there's no actual videos on YouTube of people getting a perfect score on this game. And I've done it, so I'm going to do it in the fastest time I can and upload it. And so that, because it's very, it's very hard to start a YouTube channel. It's hard to get those views trickling in. Um, and I did okay off those, off those GeoGuessr videos and it slowly went up and up and up. Uh, but when I released the mission across Wales, no one had ha actually seen my face. So I think that was the key to its su success because I had 60,000 followers from GeoGuessr by this point. A uh, couple of years ago now, who all were were eager and curious to see what I actually looked like in in the flesh. So they all watched it, and I think because they all watched it from start to finish, the YouTube algorithm latched onto that and kind of recommended it to well millions of people basically. So yeah. that helped me. That's interesting that it, it went from that to, and I guess it's still. It's very different from the other videos you did, but it's still kind of in that genre, if you know what I mean. Because is the GeoGuessr game, like I've done everything backwards. I've, I've happened to watch your Wales in a straight line and then go back through to see what the channel was about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is it just Google Earth and then you guess uh, where it basically, what location it's in, that game? It's basically Google Street View. Yeah. Um, it uses that. Um, you know, when you put the little yellow little yellow man down uh, on Google Maps and you can move down the street with those arrows and it basically uses that and it could, you know, dump you pretty much anywhere on earth. Could be, you know, South Africa, Taiwan, Brazil, and you have to look at the clues around you um, and figure out where you are, basically. Well, you've, like, as you mentioned, you've got the perfect score, but you're not just anyone who's gone on this um, mission. You seem to know a lot about this stuff. I, I watched one where your girlfriend dropped you off somewhere random as well. And oh, you, yeah. you, you had to, you was blindfolded and you had to guess where you were, but you seem to know um, probably more than you'd expect um, first watching it. So uh, was that, and because I've just started now wild camping and doing a lot more walks mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. I'm guessing mm -hmm. you're a little bit versed in these things and that's what drew you to it as well. The, the GeoGuessr? Um, actually moving from GeoGuessr to the, the, walk, the oh, yeah. walk across straight uh, Wales. And yeah, straight yeah. Now, um, I've always, yeah, I've always definitely liked a good, um, I love geography and I love hiking. Uh, I'm not the most kind of experienced, mega experienced hiker, but I've definitely done a fair few in my time. I've camped out. Um, I've cycled, I did a cycle trip, uh, to Budapest one time. 
so I'm 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 definitely uh, I've I've got a, a couple of adventures under my belt, just enough to stay alive. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the, the mission across Wales. Okay, yeah, that's what I was wondering because especially starting out doing more of them kind of things myself. Um, and then because when you're watching that Wales in a straight line, you forget, even though you show one part of it, that you are wild camping. And mm. um, I saw some people commenting, asking about how worried you were about farmers. Mm. But obviously, like you said, you could get caught within a mile and then that's a mission over. But yeah, even just in a wild camp, forget the camera and the Wales in a straight line. We did one. And you are a little bit on edge and I think <laughs> it's hard for you to portray that on the video, but definitely is that a thing as well with the wild camping? Was you having to think, right, we'll stop here and well, you'll stop here and you'll, you need to think about where to set up. Yeah, definitely. Um, luckily I have done that a few times before I've camped on my own, um, sometimes without a tent and it is, I mean, some people can do it for days and days, nights and nights on end. Um, I've got a mate who's just cycled across the world on his own and I, I couldn't do that. I, I get lonely. I get a bit glum, a bit, you know, dreary at night. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, I usually have to phone someone, you know, if I've got signal because it, it is just a bit eerie on your own and a bit lonely. I like to have someone there to, sh to share that experience with. Um, so it's not easy. Um, but you know, that's all part of the fun. You know, you wake up in the morning and you feel, oh, you feel proud of yourself for getting through the night, you know. So it's all part of the adventure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can only imagine, to be fair, doing all, all that. And that's crazy with your friend doing that as well. They, they oh, yeah. The world. He's, he's mad. <laughs> <laughs> so you say that you've camped like without a tent. What do you use? Just like a bivy and a sleeping bag? or? Um, when I cycled uh, through Europe, I didn't take a tent because it was too heavy and I just had a sleeping bag. And, but when you're on a bike, you've got the luxury of obviously you can move further in a day and you can, you can cycle past. Hopefully you can cycle past like, um, I don't know, like a little shelter with a bench underneath it in a park. Um, something like that. That's what that, I think I slept under a bridge one night. I slept in some sand dunes the one night cause I knew it wasn't going to, well, the weather forecast said it wasn't going to rain. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it is a bit risky to be fair. You wouldn't want to do it in the winter. That's for sure. <laughs> that's brilliant though. That is like some adventure. Like most people never experience that. That's what I love about it. Um, but I, I was watching, uh, I had to watch back the, a little bit of the attempt one while I was in a straight line. Um, and I know you've done other things now. I watched the Europe one as well, which I thought was brilliant. Oh yeah, uh, and um, <laughs> the first bit on the Wales in a straight line, Dan Hopkins SAS, that just uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> tickled me straight away. Your alter ego because you had the full camo <laughs> on, and then uh, everyone was commenting because you jumped over the wall. You you taken on this <laughs> you know massive mission, and then you nearly got run over. It looked like by the uh, <laughs> jumping over the wall. <laughs> um, and, uh... But yeah, that really it, set the tone. That did, yeah. yeah, yeah, it really did. I was like, "Hang on a minute, I need to watch this. This looks risky <laughs> from from the off." But yeah, I thought it was uh, it was great. And while well, everyone's commenting about gloves, have you seen this? I oh mean, yes, I have. I have seen this. Yeah. So I think uh, it, you didn't wear gloves all the way, and uh, people have just like nonstop been asking about that. <laughs> people have just been yeah calling me an idiot basically for not not wearing gloves. I did take some gloves on that trip but they were thin they were getting snagged on thorns all the time they were soaking wet because it rained all the time they were soaking wet so my hands were freezing my hands were actually warmer with them off um so that's why i didn't wear them but um yeah my hands did suffer as a result i definitely got loads of cuts and sheep shit juice <laughs> seeping into these cuts and it wasn't good uh, so, I purchased some gloves for the for the second one. So there you go. There's a big reveal for everyone asking because it's been nonstop. Everyone asking on the comments. <laughs> um, also, the river at the very start of one of them, and I think this was a theme going through a lot of them. Mm. Um, obviously, it's hard to avoid doing the straight line across the whole country. But you made like a real important decision as well at the start of one of them to just veer off the straight line a little bit. Yeah. Um, are you are you happy with that decision still? Because it seems we're reading now in the news a lot of people are going into these rivers and losing their life because of uh, 
you know, silly decisions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, big time. Um, I'm, I couldn't be happier with that decision. Um, the only thing that was making me want to just do it was the, I just wasn't sure um, how people would react on the internet, I guess, which is a silly reason. But I was just picturing all these comments like, oh, come on, like, you know, first mile and you've already deviated, you know, you could have swam across that. But the comments were just overwhelmingly, I think I saw one or two that was like, you could have swam that. Thousands of others were basically saying, great call. That was death, that river. It was, you know, over two meters deep, swollen, freezing cold, um, just, <laughs> just stupid. And I had my big bag with me that would have, you know, weighed me pulled me down the river basically so it, it just if you're not sure i think i'm not the strongest swimmer and if you're not sure don't do it it's not worth no 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 straight line mission or any adventure is worth you know risking your life for so yeah i think you, you definitely made the right call with it and it would be easy to let you know ego or anything or just determination for the mission to like jump yeah. in there and then like you say it's not worth it absolutely um, you mentioned comments there. Obviously, you didn't know like the kind of uh, traction that these videos would build, but did they still play into your head and change anything about the experience? Was you, I don't know, it plays a part in your head, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was constantly, um, you know, that was what was driving me on, really, not just my own personal um, determination and, and pride in what I was doing, but you know, what was the reaction going to be? How is it going to be received? Can I do, can I be more daring? Um, am I being a pussy? You know, are people going to call me out here? Um, so that was definitely, you know, cause I care what people think. Um, and so, yeah, that was definitely something that was pushing me, you know, to now nah, come on, it, you know, you can run through this farm. It doesn't matter if there's a farmer or a dog or whatever, you got to do it. You got to do it that definitely drove me like a magnet to the line, you know, <laughs> that's, what, that, that's the creator in you, I guess you, you, you're viewing it, not just from your eyes, but what you're actually making. Um, yeah. 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 So, but, um, you also had a kayak waiting for you and, um, yeah. How was that? So I bet you, was ho <laughs> I remember the guy at the start saying, you know, lost kayak or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost it, kayak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really posh, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the um, 50th, 50th in line for the throne, I think you said. He it. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it seemed like a nice guy who let you, let you through. He was a really nice guy. I would love to know if he watched it and what he thought of it because he really was a, a spiffing chap. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he kind of, it was basically his land, but he was like, I think he just respected or found it interesting what I was doing and just let me go. But, um, oh yeah, the kayak was, um, might have been the scariest part because um, that lake was just, again, like freezing cold. It was a cheap, you know, made in China, as I said, uh, inflatable kayak, um, which I don't know if, if it burst in the middle of the lake or floated away or something, um, I would have been in a real pickle. Because uh, I didn't have a life jacket. Always wear a life jacket. Kids. Yeah, <laughs> that was stupid. Um, yeah, so you was battling it out against farmers, hedgerows, barbed wire. A lot of barbed wire, weren't they? And, oh yeah, effect. every hundred uh, meters. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then obviously like the the cold water as well, because you did have to swim in a lot of it. Um, mm. What what was the <laughs> hardest bit of that that first attempt? If you like looking back now. Oh. That yeah, the the kayak, uh, the the anticipation of uh, kayaking across the lake has to be up there. Um, this the some of the most grueling bits were actually some of the the forests, you know, where you've got like slippy fallen logs, fallen trees, um, just a, a sea of like um, you know jungly foliage brambles twigs poking in your eye that was you know that was really disheartening because you you might move like a hundred meters in about half an hour and you're like god what am i doing you know um but i think the scariest bit scariest moment it didn't last long but 
was um, when I climbed up this really steep mountainside. Um, I think it was on the last but one episode. It wasn't long before I things went wrong in the mountains. And that was really stupid. I climbed up this kind of mossy, rocky mountainside. And I got to a point and I was like, I can't go back down because it's, it's more dangerous to go back down. Um, so I carried on going up. But if I'd have slipped, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would have uh, survived that fall. So that was, again, very stupid. Yeah, I remember that one. And that, that was hard to show on the camera as well. I remember you saying that, you know, one slip and, and that's, that's it with, uh, yeah. with that. that must, and, and you would have been pretty exhausted by that point, wouldn't you? I think it was it 33 miles all in all. All in all. About, yeah. Yeah. All in all, it was 33 miles. Um, and that day, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty, you know, I was kind of, I'd been wet since about 10 a.m. that day. So I was, you know, freezing cold and, you know. Yeah, um, it, it, I, um, me and my girlfriend, we did a, a walk and it was only like uh, Peak District and we ended up, navigation's definitely not my strong point. So. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm, I'm not great at it. So we ended up veering off this um, trail. And we, we kind of got stuck. We started doing, it felt like we were doing the mission. We was like, ended up on some land and trying to climb things, duck under, you know, really? you mentioned it in the forests and stuff with like that being some of the most grueling parts. Yeah. We, we, we didn't walk far at all and I was exhausted. And um, yeah. I suddenly thought to myself, actually, it's a lot harder than it looks when, when you've got all these obstacles that you, you just don't account yeah. for. It can take it out of you, yeah. Was was the girlfriend not best pleased with your no I, I'm, <laughs> no definitely not we ended up um, some one of the landowners actually came over and they they weren't happy about letting us over but it was the only way to get back onto the sort of <laughs> we're about to get back onto the road to the car but uh, yeah, yeah I was thinking yeah. I, I suddenly thought like this is it would only take that to happen to you once and it takes you off your whole route yeah then, doesn't it yeah yeah I'm, that's why I'm so paranoid about farmers all the time yeah. yeah. So so was I watching it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, experiencing it with you. Yeah, I, I I go on walks with my girlfriend Verity, and uh, more often than not, that happens. Oh, I, I say, oh, come on, all we need to do is cut across here, and it's way quicker. And she always she always ends up and very annoyed with me for <laughs> doing these naughty shortcuts. You know, it adds to it for definitely. It does. I think so. <laughs> um going back to like the youtube and the editing i know you mentioned earlier how hard it is um how are you finding that as a youtube creator now and how's this because like we said you've got like near 10 million views just on this one series it's like a five episode um bit yeah you've done a second attempt um you've done how not to travel europe mm -hmm. which is probably actually my favorite of the, of the free oh, I love, really? I love, yeah i love the wales one and i I kind of held that up and was like, oh, this is going to be not as good as that one. I, I'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to it. but And then I, I loved that one in the end. It was something I thought I'd love to do that. Yeah, I, I thought that would be, um, I guess I always think negatively before I, I release them, but I, I thought that would be less liked. But the the reaction, I couldn't believe it. Everyone loved it, yeah. So with, with the creating of it, how... Did you find that? Because I think it's it's wicked how you've uh, you've done the narration, and there's something different to your videos than the other sort of adventurer. That because I watch a few channels and I, I like them as well, mm -hmm. and they they go with the whole sort of I don't know uh, professional cameras and this and that. Yeah. But you you seem to like nail the unique of feature of the narration and the sort of retro music. It sounds like a, oh yeah. I thought it sounded like Sega or Nintendo style. Uh... Sega, yeah. Is That's it exactly Sega? What I was going for, yeah. Sega Mega Drive. Mm. Yeah. I thought so. So, like, how was that sort of process for you of like of making it? And like you said, the editing was hard. But did you have like by the time you'd finished it, did you know what you were trying to to do with the mm. the footage? Yeah, I think to begin with, I didn't think I was gonna do narration. Um, madly enough, but. You know, I started editing it and laying it all out and I just, it, it dawned on me pretty quickly. Look, people aren't going to know what's going on. They're not going to know what I was feeling, what I was, 
scared about coming up, um, how far I had to go, you know, all of these different things that I describe in the narration, I, I just had to do it. But I just thought that my voice would sound stupid um, in the narration. Um, so I had to kind of change my voice a bit, make it a bit more enthusiastic. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it, I think it worked, but it's, it's tough. It's tough to, I find it tough, as I said, because I'm not, I haven't got a history. I've never learned to edit. I just had to kind of, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I had to trial and error, trial and error. Um, you know, which, which run of clips can stand alone as just clips, which clips need a bit of narration, which ones can have some music over it. Um, what needs to be said. There's so much thought that goes into it. Um, but I, I am getting faster now. I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. Yeah. It, it's, it's, which is good <laughs> it, it is tough and it does take a long time and i've only done a little bit of messing about with editing and something i want to get into a bit more but yeah i, lo I love the narration part of it as well it, it added like the hu it pretty much made it i think as well and yeah it's mad, mad to think that you you might not have done that i know uh, <laughs> so did it change your life or not because i think people assume that con those kind of views you know set you up for another career then on youtube yeah um it's not as lucrative. The pay isn't as lucrative of, as, as some people think. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, an, it's, it's enough for me to do this as a full-time job now. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's definitely changed my life because I, I get to, I get to do these adventures and um, get paid for it. And I get to, you know, inspire people, which is, you know, a really it's a real privilege you know to when i see these young lads or girls um tell me that you know oh this has inspired them to get off their ass and you know go out and do adventures or just put themselves out of their comfort zone um i need to keep re reminding myself of that and how lucky i am to to be able to give that gift you know so i've got to just relish it yeah, that's awesome. I, like it did that for me as well. Definitely watching it, thinking, I don't know, you just want to get out and do it as well. Or, uh, yeah. Like I said, you feel like you're experiencing it anyway. Um, but yeah, that that's wicked. And a lot, a lot of people do think that YouTube probably pays a lot better than it does, and it, it's not the same as what it was probably ten years ago, is it? Um, but... Yeah, I think the the way you would make the most money on YouTube is through sponsorships. You know, you can you see a lot of these adverts for things like you know. Uh, what's the common one now? Raid Shadow Legends and um, uh, VPN, Nord VPN, and stuff like that. Which I considered doing, but I haven't. I haven't done anything like that yet. I'd rather do an advert with a company that I don't know, like um, Garmin or you know, some hiking boots or hiking clothes, so that it, so that I can actually wholeheartedly say this is a good product, and I would buy it myself you know yeah that that's a good show i mean um i'm sure there's a lot of uh, equipment that you really put into the test and things like that as well well actually what did you use for water did you have a water filter with you so you could stay by a stream and just yeah go? yeah that little blue tube with the pouch um yeah it's great it's called the uh is it the sawyer one soya that's yeah. it yeah soya mini filter so i really like that thing I, I took took it the the other day to do a wild camp, but we didn't end up needing it. I took so much water, which was probably a waste of space. I think that's one of the things you learn as well is I've got so much in the bag. I need to empty it up a little bit, make more room, but it's all learning. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, water does weigh a lot, but, you know, it's funny. I, the last time I went on a hike with my mates um, who were kind of le a bit less experienced, I, I said, look, all you need is the mini filter. That's all you need. Don't bring two liters of water in the bag. But um, just so happened that we went up onto this ridge and we didn't pass a stream for hours and hours. And we were absolutely, you know, <laughs> our mouths were like Gandhi's flip flop, you know. So, so it was like, you can't, sometimes you can't plan for it. You know, it's, you, you, you should always take water as well, just in case. So. Yeah, I suppose you, you want to be so prepared that sometimes you go over the top, but then, like you say, it can, you can shoot yourself in the foot, I guess, like that. You can, yeah. So it yeah. is easily done. 
Um, I, I want to ask shortly about, you know, like some of the things you've got coming up because I've seen little hints of things online, uh-huh. but, but we haven't even talked about, um, the second attempt. And obviously you took Greg, your friend. Um, what's your sort of background with Greg? Is that your friend from a childhood friend? Yeah, he's, he's a childhood friend. We've, we, we met as little kids in primary school and his dad ended up being with my mom for a good number of years. And, you know, we did everything together. Like we were, we, we are like brothers, you know, we're like brothers. And um, we used to do, uh, our, our bond is particularly relevant because we used to do these mad adventures, you know, exploring the countryside and abandoned places. Um, I mostly did it with him in the younger years. And um, we used to get such a thrill from doing it together. So that bond is just, that adventurous bond together is just everlasting, you know. So it, it was so great to do How Not to Travel Europe with him. Um, and then to finally do a straight line mission with him was just like, it was so magical, you know. What, what was like the, obviously, apart from you have the company, but what were the main things you noticed from attempt one on your own to attempt two being with Greg? Like, does it? There was definitely some uh, positives and negatives. So um, the main negative, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. It's nothing you can't um, account for, but it's just slightly slower paced because, um, you know, if there's a, a really tricky hedgerow, you've both got to get over it. So, so you're waiting for the next person to do it. Um, so there's that, um, we definitely ate more. Um, but mainly it was great because, you know, we had each other to share the, uh, experience with and yeah, we had each other for a kind of company on the night time. We had a nice fire going and we could chat and reminisce about the day. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Like it, it's obviously going to take twice as long to do certain bits. We, Pretty much, yeah. With the food, um, I haven't even asked about that, but obviously these are things that go through your head when you're watching it. Is it hard to pack enough food for the adventure? And then, and then did you have somewhere where you pick more food up? Yeah, we, we, um, the main issue was we had a load of food. Greg eats like a horse, uh, you know, Greg eats like a horse. And, um, we, yeah, we, we made a stash about sort of, I think it was about 16 miles in, but because we were going slightly slower and we had a bit of a late start, which set us back, we, we really struggled to, to get to that stash point in time. Uh, but we did, we did do it. But, um, and then after that, then we were, we were running out of food and we were in talks with going to this petrol state, well, getting someone from a petrol station to meet us with more supplies. So yeah, it, it, food was an issue. Um, and cause of Greg's condition, the Addison's, he needs to eat more as well. Uh, but this is something we, we will sort out for our next mission, uh, that we're going to do together in March, which will be Scotland. Um, so that's going to be great because Greg now has, um, he knows exactly what to do. He know he knows he needs to eat more food, uh, have take more medication. Obviously we'll, we'll get to that whole thing of what happened but um yeah we, we're, we're looking forward to the next one basically yeah i'm glad you said that i was thinking scotland I, I was thinking where where would be like awesome places to go and obviously the places that come to mind scotland and norway and places like that i think mm. um and, and iceland you know like ran just those sort of scenic areas yeah. and be interesting to see that um talking about that uh, is it addison's is that what it's called that greg's got addison's yeah yeah and that's that there was a episode where um sort of towards the end of the second attempt where where uh he had issues with that would you be able to talk yeah. us through what, what happened with that yeah basically um i think it was on the fourth day um and we were just over halfway through um and yeah he just you know he he just started to feel weak dizzy and kind of like slumped back on the floor and he was basically having a some sort of Addisonian crisis, which is basically similar to if a diabetic person were to have uh, whatever it is that they have, like you know, uh, yeah. and they need their, their EpiPen to 
you know, jumpstart them back into life sort of thing. Um, and it was really worrying because we were in the most remote, like gorge, wooded gorge. Um, and yeah, so we were far from medical help. And yeah, so it was a bit touch and go. Greg was fine in the end, but you know, he had to, he had to call it a day there and I had to kind of make sure that he was escorted to safety. And in doing so, we left, we left the line on that occasion by, you know, two miles. So yeah. it was unfortunate, but you know, we had to make that decision. It's good though, that you're, you've been sensible with it, you know, like with some of these things that come up and it just makes the whole things realistic, you know, you know, yeah. trying to, to go beyond limits. And obviously there's nothing you could, could do about that. I know you, you mentioned it on the video and it, glad to hear that is uh, okay. Now and you've got more, more uh, adventures planned. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He, he just, um, he, he hadn't long been diagnosed with it and uh, he's, he's a really determined guy and he's, you know, it did set him back a bit, but he, his spirit is uh, something to behold. And yeah, he just didn't realize that he needed to be double dosing when he was exerting himself that much. And he should have been drinking more water and eating a bit more food, especially salty foods. So for Scotland, you know, we're going to have tons of stash points, you know, enough food to sink the Titanic and he's going to double dose and we'll be, you know, we'll be fully prepared that time and he can put that to bed. And, um, yeah. you know, yeah, we failed that time, but you know, it's, it's a great feeling to come back and finally put that to bed. So hopefully. Yeah. 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 Well, you're learning a lot of lessons, aren't you as well? Like going through them, like from, from the first one to the second to, yeah. I suppose now you're thinking, you know, safety precautions as well with the stashes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Greg was on the, how not to travel Europe as well, weren't he? Which like I say, I enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, he was. So, so what was the mission with that one? There was a lot of different challenges, weren't they? Like, um, traveling free on certain transport and yeah things like that. It, it was i guess it had less of a of a definite um direction uh you know mission across wales is you know it is what it says on the tin cross a country in a straight line this was you know we we all we knew was we wanted to have a great adventure and we wanted some meaning we wanted some challenges and meaning thrown in so we kind of cooked up a few things, um, use as many different modes of transport as you can. So we ended up on kayaks, uh, scooters, um, boat. Uh, did we go on a boat? Yeah. Boat, and, tra yeah. and a tractor. <laughs> tractor, you know, trains, obviously, and buses and things like that, cars. Um, and all for free. So you can't spend any money on it uh, on public transport. And then there was a few more challenges thrown in there, like just stupid stuff that me and Greg cooked up, like uh, uh, run an errand for a village baker. Um, what was the other one? Score a goal in a football match. And of course, we had 10 days to do it all in to get from Geneva to Bratislava. So we had our work cut out, definitely. Yeah, it seemed tough, like all the things. That that was making me laugh as well with the, trying to score a goal. You spent like a good while after a few drinks trying to find a, a local football game and score a goal, <laughs> just like as it ended up here. And uh, it, It's it was, crazy. It's funny though. It's uh, crazy how we came across that game because it was like 10 p.m. at night. <laughs> it was brilliant. Was, but everything seemed to just be working out and you could see it was all um, natural the way it happened and it was just uh, yeah. synchronized that... Uh, you found the baker at one point, you found the football game. But the thing that stood out to me was how like, how friendly people were and that yeah. just by you going and doing this sort of adventure, you were finding people and talking to them. Yeah. And it's something we don't do as much, especially being from, I'm guessing you're from local, from uh, mm -hmm. Birmingham, are you? That's yeah, right. yeah. Well, it's uh, not... just Yeah, like Aldridge, just north of Aldridge. Birmingham. So, you know, it's not, it's, we don't spend as much time talking to one another funnily enough, like being in a, in a busy place and you had to go and socialize with people. And, uh, you had, I'm trying to think what you had now. You had the, the guy with the tractor and one of them ended yeah. up being from Redditch where, uh, you said, Oh yeah, she lived in Redditch. Yeah. <laughs> you said she wanted to, uh, reminisce about the shitness of, uh, Redditch yeah. or Birmingham. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, there was, there was the guy who let us sleep in his camper van for the night when it was about to rain. That was uh, it. Jerry. Yeah. 
Um, there was Mario who drove back and returned Greg's phone when he left it in his car. Um, the ladies who we helped, um, I know we were helping them, but they were still really nice when we were picking potatoes. Yeah, it, it, that struck us as well. That really hit us um, and humbled us, the, the generosity and hospitality of people. Um, and I think it is, I think you're, you're on the money. I think it is to do with when you have big cities, there's so many people, you can't possibly accommodate that many people. You know, you, you're walking past thousands of people every day and you're just trying to make ends meet, trying to go, go to work, do your shopping. You haven't got time. But when you live in the countryside, um, you only know a handful of people. You all, you all care for each other. You help each other out when you're in need. It's a slow pace of life. You have time to be generous. And I think that's what we found. And it was, yeah, it was heartwarming. Yeah, and if you think about it, when, we're, when we've got a task or something to do, we're, we're like this, we look at the phone, this is the way that you go, this is, mm. is there this local, can we do, but obviously you, was, you had to be detached from that, so you were looking for missions where you had to actually go up to people and, yeah. and ask for their help, so I, I think that adds to it, and that, that was the main theme, like you say that, you just mentioned, there was one as well with a church, wasn't there? It, oh, yeah, those ladies, oh, they were, yeah, I mean, what was the what was the challenge? Seek refuge in a house of God, you know. How does that happen? I, th- I think it was just too hot. It was like thirty five degrees, so we figured that was that warranted us to go in there. And yeah, these two religious kind of middle aged ladies in Austria just showed us around the church, and they absolutely they were so devoted and passionate about the church. It was just so nice. Yeah, that was, uh, that was brilliant. Like, like I say, there's so many different... We could sit and name so many people. I think that's what made me laugh, is every time you met someone, you're like, this is the new nicest person or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah. And then it was like, <laughs> no, this person is this person. And it was just because how, you know, how nice each one was and Absolutely. what they'd done for you at that time. Um, yeah, I think you're right, though. We, we In modern society, we, we're always looking down, aren't we? We're looking down on our phones. If, if we need something doing our phone can do it more often than not. Um, so it, yeah. if, if everyone was just looking up at each other, the world would be a better place, definitely. Yeah, I find myself doing it. And I wouldn't say I'm someone as bad as, like, obviously, you think of the generations coming up now. It's mm. a whole different ball game. But even myself, like, I rely on so many things from my phone. Um, yeah, same. It's just, it's just easier, isn't it? And But, yeah, I think with your head up and having to ask these questions, you're communicating with people. Um, yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and you get so much more uh, of a deep sense of reward from, from human interactions than you would from any sort of likes or comments on a, on a Facebook post. Yeah, so true. I think that's, that's, a, that's what it lasts about, isn't it? The interaction and helping one another. And that's what you're doing. You're helping people out there, helping you. Um, yeah, yeah, they were mainly helping us. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you had a bit of uh, frying eggs on back wheels in between, of course. Can't forget all that stuff. Oh, yeah. On the scooters. Yeah, you had the scooters. That looked dangerous as hell, that did, like, when you was going down. I was like, oh, what are they doing on these scooters? And then I was like, oh, okay, this is a bit, uh, it's a bit much going down here. I, I feared for you both. It was uh, a bit precarious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, funny. Uh, with all these things now, you've got, like, the two whales in the straight line. Obviously, I mentioned the one where you were blindfolded by your mm-hmm. girlfriend and, and dropped somewhere and you had to make your way back and guess mm-hmm. uh, where you were. What is it hard to keep thinking of, uh, you know, like good sort of videos and purposes? Cause mm-hmm. it, it's one thing coming up with an adventure, but then, like you say, this last one wasn't what it said on the tin necessarily, like you say, but you had mm-hmm. different purposes and a storyline yeah it it was hard to come up with ways to make that one purposeful and and keep the viewers gripped throughout the whole series um i I have got a lot i have got a lot of ideas for for adventures that i can do myself definitely um it's it's been affected a bit by the covid situation and also it's slow it's slow the conveyor belt is quite slow because i have to edit them all myself um and i can't really get help from an editor because it's 
the way that it works with the narration, I'm, I'm telling this story and I kind of have to do it myself, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I've got plenty more in the pipeline, plenty more straight line missions um, and lots of other little ideas. Um, I've just got to I've just got to try and cram them all in before I'm before my legs start giving up, basically, and I get too old. <laughs> So you, you've got one in Scotland uh, with Greg organised. Can you mention many others or have you got to keep them quiet for now with, with plans? And the, um, I, I know you can't mention too much. but Well, Norway will be released um, in a couple of months. That one is filmed already. I won't yeah. spoil whether it was a success or another failure. Um, but yeah, Scotland is in March. Um, I think I'm going to do Luxembourg as well in Feb. Are these all straight line missions or are these all yeah. different ideas? Oh, they are. Yeah. These are just straight line missions. Um, but then um, next summer, hopefully, depending on Greg's work situation, his job situation, um, I'd love to do another how not to travel uh, Europe. It's also, again, COVID permitting. But if we could do some sort of like how not to travel Southeast Asia or South America, um, that would be epic, you know. Um, and but apart from that, yeah, just I'll keep it secret for now. Yeah. In case anyone steals my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. It's um, I look forward to seeing them, especially those countries that like you said, uh, Scotland and Norway, just because I'm interested in travel there anyway. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, before sort of uh, calling it a, a day on the on the podcast, I'd love to know uh, different bits of advice that you could give people. First off, like I'm thinking of starting a YouTube. Um, what yeah. advice would you give to me in doing that? I would say, well, first off, like definitely you got to be passionate and interested, um, massively interested in in what you're doing uh, to keep that passion going and that passion will seep through to the viewer. And um, so there's that. Um, I would say, I would say it's important to find something, find a little gap in the market. Um, I didn't, I wasn't really particularly looking for that, but with the GeoGuessr thing, I did notice, oh, no one's done that. If I'd have seen that it, it was chock-a-block with videos, I might not have bothered. Um, so yeah, find a gap in the market, do something that's, I mean, everything's been done really now, but you'd be surprised. There are ways of doing things. There are combinations of things that you can make your own and, and it will, it will be fresh and, and original to people. Um, so yeah, those two, and just, you know, be confident, try and be funny. I would say is, you know, make people laugh is always a good formula. Um, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. I think as you say, with doing it, um, like you might not have meant to, but it was very unique anyway with the narration. And then I think people were invested in you, weren't they, by the end of that. So then they wanted to see your adventure. So as yeah. you say, you don't want your ideas stolen, but people are invested in you now. And I noticed that with the episodes, they, they had good retention by the looks of it, I thought, to keep those views high. And I think they did, yeah. Yeah, that was something I was really pleased about, the, the audience retention. Um, and that's what the YouTube algorithm kind of picks up and goes, oh, that's good. We want to keep people on our platform, which is what all these companies want at the end of the day. Facebook, yeah. YouTube. That's yeah, why that... we're always on our phones. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If you, mm -hmm. if, they can send, if you can send someone to the next video, then obviously it's, everyone wins. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, also, what advice would you give to people? not so much for the YouTube aspects, but maybe they've seen your video and they want to go out and adventure different countries or just go mm. out and for a walk. It could be as simple as that. And what, so yeah, what advice would you give to people looking for an adventure or wild camping and stuff like that? Do it. Yeah. Uh, get out there. Um, set yourself a high bar. Um, well, st if you've never do if you've never hiked before or cycled start slow obviously but then you know if you're an ambitious person set yourself a a, a challenge or an adventure that seems like almost oh no i can't do that but then just go and go and go out and do it um 
put yourself out of your comfort zone um, because you can do it. It's just a matter of steel, mental strength. And, um, you know, if you give up, that's a shame. But if you do, if you do push through and do it, I can guarantee you'll be twice the person you were before and you'll be so proud of yourself um, and you'll just feel, yeah, proud of yourself, complete, alive. And I think that's what people are missing these days a bit. They, they don't, I mean, I was the same. I didn't have much purpose. I was a bit lost. Didn't really particularly feel good about myself. Um, so that's one way that you can, I think the best way that you can solve that is to just get out there, put yourself out of your comfort zone, achieve something you never thought you could achieve. Um, yeah. That, that, that's quite motivating. So you, you didn't feel great. Is this before the, um, these particular challenges on YouTube as well? You didn't feel great. And then because the thing is mm. people are scared to fail, but there is no, it sounds cheesy. It sounds really cheesy, but there is no failing. Like if you give it a go and, and you don't no. do it, you learn about yourself, don't you? Yeah. If, if you never, what's the quote? He who doesn't, who never fails is never giving himself a test yeah. worth doing. You know, um, you've got to fail. I mean, I failed twice on, on the first mission across Wales, um, but you learn from it. Uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, to answer your first question, I was definitely, year, I'm talking years ago now, um, sort of in my early 20s, I was definitely in a bit of a rut, you know, I, I had these kind of um, jobs, these kind of dead end jobs, and um, I, I think I was scared of, scared of failing to make it as a musician, and so I was constantly just kind of like petering along and struggling with the odd, you know, battling the odd bit of sort of depression and things like that just didn't have a much of a, a purpose. And that's probably why I was a bit depressed, you know? Um, but luckily things have worked out because I've had, I like to think I had a positive attitude. So do you, do you think that was the purpose thing that helped you overcome that, um, or the outdoors or both or, you know, was it? Um, yeah, I'd say, I think it actually, I think I actually sorted myself out before um, just from hanging around with the right people, making sure I wasn't drinking too much or smoking too much, cutting all that crap out, yeah. um, get going a bit more clean edge. Um, and then things just followed from there, really. I met Verity, my girlfriend, um, and she was like a, a real sort of rock of stability that made me, you know, not wander off down the wrong path. And then I just really knuckled down with, with the GeoGuessr stuff and, you know, which, which is lucky, but, um, it, you know, it's a mixture of luck and hard work. And, uh, I've just made sure ever since not to slip back down and just keep, keep going positive, you know? Yeah. And I, and it didn't seem from like my outer perspective, like it was luck. It seems like persistence. And it, I thought, watching the narrations and stuff it would have been a shame if you never ended up doing something like this which could have quite easily happened if you'd stuck to yeah. um your normal job and not going for it so uh yeah because you seem to have the charisma and stuff for the the narration of these videos which is good um well, but yeah thanks. yeah I, honestly like uh, and i've shown your video to quite a few people and then they're like what's this you know wales in a straight line and then mm. it takes five minutes and you sort of grip them but uh yeah it's brilliant oh brilliant that's so <laughs> good to hear <laughs> um but yeah cheers for uh the inspiration mate and thanks for joining us today um i don't know if there's anything you'd like to add and um before before going is or um i think i've covered most bases really um you know i would just say yeah just get out there and live your life you yeah know? don't and be afraid just do things that you can't be asked to do just do it you know and uh is there anywhere to find you as, aside from youtube i've not seen many socials or anything are you on any social media i'm not i mean i'm on facebook but just kind of privately um yeah. i've been toying with the idea of going on instagram but you know as we've said i'm on my phone enough as it is and i've just kind of been putting it off really Although yeah it is another way to make money um <laughs> i admire that you know sometimes i think the instagram and stuff can become more of a distraction 
and more yeah. time consuming than what it's worth. Um, yeah. Uh, you've got your fan base and your followers and stuff on, on YouTube now. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy on YouTube. Um, I, I will be, I mean, this is like a, sh- a bit of a shameless plug, but you will be able to find me soon on Spotify and iTunes because I'll be releasing the Mission Across Wales um, soundtrack. Well, it won't be called that. It, it will feature the, the soundtrack of the Mission Across Wales and How Not to Travel Europe and Norway. Um, so that will be released soon. If anyone wants to see that, it'll be. I'll have all the details on my channel. So, Okay, so just keep a lookout on your YouTube channel. We've got... Um that on spotify that yep. you'll tell everyone about we've got the norway adventure and we've got a scotland one with you and greg as well to, yep. to look out lots for. to come lots to come Nor- norway will be mid november scotland will be well we're filming it in march so probably be released in about may so okay brilliant but uh yeah thanks tom i appreciate it we'll uh end the podcast there but yeah inspirational i really enjoyed all the series thanks for having me i really enjoyed chatting to you yeah cheers mate nice one all right thank you see you soon see you soon mate